ערב טוב. Good evening. לא אתחיל בשבחי המכון ובהודעה על זה שהזמינו אותי הנה כי אני לא חלק מהמכון ואין לך פה מעיד על עיסתו. בגלל שישר לי דבריי, אני על כל השאלות, לאו דווקא בסדר שהם נשאלו, אלא לפי סדר החשיבות שאני רואה אותן. ואתחיל בשאלה, לו היית ראש ממשלה, מהו המהלך המרכזי הראשון שהיית עושה? אין ספק שהדבר הראשון שצריך לעשות זה לשנות מנהיגות, סגנון מנהיגות, במילים אחרות, מנהיגות אחרת. מנהיגות של דוגמה אישית, של צניעות, של טוהר מידות, של אחדות ולא של שיסוי, לא פילוג בין ימין ושמאל, אשכנזים, מזרחים, דתיים, חרדים, יהודים, ערבים, זה צריך לרדת מסדר-היום של חברה שרוצה להיות בריאה. מנהיגות שבוחרת וממנה אנשים בעלי יכולת ולא על בסיס נאמנות אישית. מעודדת אותם להשמיע את דעתם ולא להפוך אותם ל-yes men. מנהיגות שייצגו אותם בעבר שלנו, אנשים כמו דוד בן גוריון ומנחם בגין, בלי קשר לחילוקי הדעות ביניהם, או יצחק שמיר או מדינה שצריכה לדעת לקחת אחריות על מה שהמדינה צריכה לספק לאזרחיה. נוצר מצב שרק הביטחון זה מונופול של מדינה, המדינה מספקת. כשזה מגיע לביטחון פנים, חינוך, בריאות, רווחה, חולים, סיפורים, שעשירים יש להם יותר ועניים יש להם פחות. היום המדינה בעצם גורמת לזה שבתחומים שציינתי יש או הפרטה או מגזר שלישי שנותן מענה לחלל הריק שיוצר את המדינה. נכון, זה חייבת ההגדלה של ההוצאה האזרחית. יש לי בעניין הזה תוכנית בסדר גודל של 150 מיליארד. שקל לעשור, כ-15 מיליארד שקל בשנה, כן, להגדיל את ההוצאה האזרחית, לתת מענה לצרכים הללו. מצבנו הכלכלי בהחלט יאפשר את זה. enables us to do that while maintaining a free uh, trade, free market, but without uh, taking away from what we have to give to the citizens so that the, those who have more money give today better education to his children or uh, אני אדרוש מכל משרד להציג תוכנית רב-שנתית. היום המשרד היחידי שיש לו תוכנית רב-שנתית זה משרד הבריאות. איך מקיימים מדינה כשלמשרד הבריאות אין תוכנית עשר שנתית? הרי יודעים כמה אוכלוסיית תהיה בעוד עשר שנה. שנים בתוכנית. צריך לדעת כמה מיטות אתם באוכלוסייה. כמה רופאים, כמה אחיות. לא שכתוצאה מלחץ מקימים בית חולים באוזילאי שפושט את בית החולים באוזילאי. ושניהם היום נותנים מענה לאוכלוסייה האזורית. השאלה של מה הייתי מציע למחמוד עבאס, לא היינו נפגשים. קודם כל אנחנו מכירים. אנחנו מכירים מסדרת כבר, הייתי צנחן עברי במלחמת השנה, אני תמיד בחיים שלי נלחם במלחמת השנה. ג'ורדן. אחרי זה נלחמתי במלחמת השנה, 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 אחרי זה נלחמתי Uh, then ואחרי זה, אחרי אוסלו, כן, הייתי ראש אמן yes, של רבין בכל ברכה, נשיא אוסלו, ואחריו של שמעון פרס, זכרו לברכה, היה ראש ממשלה מאוד מאוד מוצלח, הוא היה ראש ממשלה מאוד מאוד מוצלח, ואחר כך שבנימין נתניהו ייבדל לחיים ארוכים, ואחר כך אלוף פיקוד המרכז של ברק, כאשר הוא הלך לקמפ דיוויד, וסגן רמטכ"ל ורמטכ"ל שנכנס לבית חומת מגן, ואני הייתי ראש ממשלה מאוד מאוד מוצלח, 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 ואני הייתי ראש ממשלה מאוד מאוד
information table, even when I looked at it from the side when I was in uniform, definitely later when I was sitting with him in the government and the cabinet and when I was Minister of Defense. I definitely understand that you, Mahmoud Abbas, you do not want and you cannot get to a permanent agreement with us based on the division of the country, even based on the 67 borders, in a way that would be the end of the conflict, the end of the uh, uh, claims. You told us there two and a half weeks ago. I wasn't surprised. Your problem is not 67, not even 48. It's 1917 Balfour Declaration. Since then, since the beginning of Zionism and the conflict between us, there was no le leadership on your side that said that, that some sort of a division in this country is going to bring about the end. So to collaborate with us, uh, that's, uh, this is actually what brought me to politics. But in this situation where on the one hand I don't see any chance for a permanent agreement, but on the other hand I don't want a binational state. And uh, if Oslo gave us something good was the political political separation, we already, you already got it, but you decided to uh, divide into two entities, one hostile Hamastan, I know how to deal with them as well, uh, and then we had protective uh, edge, and uh, there's a problem there in Gaza, there's no stability, also Judea and Samaria are not stable, but we have to go into a process which is a certain way, and where I understand that you're not made for deciding based on 67, because in your narrative it's uh, Palestine from the river to the sea. And if you accept 67, you give up 78% of Palestine. I understand that. So let's go to something which is not a permanent solution where the two peoples can live one beside the other. Of course, you depend on us like uh, Siamese twins we are. The, your economy depends on ours. Working in Israel and uh, investing in Israel. Infrastructure, we're out of Gaza, but we still support supply electricity and water. Look at the humanitarian uh, crisis. We, if you, we were clever, so we desalinated water. Even Jordanians drink our water, and we gave them an installation just now. So econo the economy cannot be divided. The uh, electricity, water, you cannot uh, detach it. You depend on us. Also in security, you know very well, better than others, that if now we stop the freedom of movement uh, and general security in Judea, Samaria, uh, you cannot survive. How long did you survive in Gaza after we left? The Hamas uh, defeated you in Dachlan in two minutes, a few months, with all the money and all the assistance that we got. We today do 70% of the thwarting in Judea and Samaria, and we fight the same uh, enemies, Hamas, uh, ISIS, um, uh, without us you cannot survive. So at the end of the day, when the Rabin uh, saw the end of Oslo, you're going to be something that's going to be less than a state. You'll be a demilitarized autonomy depending on us. And therefore, let's advance to that direction. There's something we can do. We can advance a lot of things in the economy, in the infrastructure, definitely in security. But there are other things that depend on you. And I, when I understood uh, the great uh, force of Oslo during Rabin, you continue to con educate your young generation to hate the Jews, the Zionists, the Israelis. Uh, you call us colonialists. You call us crusaders. And as far as you're concerned, until justice be done, namely the V no state of Israel, you don't want to state side by side. You want your state. So stop educating this way. So let's strengthen what we can. What we do have today is a regional initiative. If it happens, we're trying to uh, bring it. Maybe Trump will be able to do that. Uh, we can he can collaborate with the regional initiative. You were called to come to Riyadh. And you, as a result from what understood that's going to be there, now you attack the American administration. Give an opportunity maybe to the regional forces to help you. Because the Palestinian issue is not an Israeli one. It was created by all the Arab states the refugees, the other problems, so let's try to solve it together. We are going to be honest partners to that, understanding that uh, you cannot uh, come to a permanent agreement, and I don't want a bilateral state. How to cope with the Iranian threat 
לסוריה ולקראת היום שאחרי הנאומה. קודם כל האיום האיראני הכי חיצוני, חיזבאללה הוא לא רלוונטי. איראן לא רלוונטי. בלי איראן האיסלאמית שלנו לא יכולים לעזור לעזרים שלהם. אז הם לא יכולים לעזור לעזרים שלהם. ולכן אין ספק שמבחינתנו... But it wants to eradicate Israel. Again, we never conquered anything in 67 of Iranian territories. So obviously the center of the threat on us is the Iranian threat. Threat, but it's not just towards us. What happened here in the last eight years as a result of the American weakness with the decision to come to a deal, nuclear deal, that could have been excellent if, in fact, Iran would uh, dismantle itself from all its capabilities but stop behaving the way it does. So what happened that the deal was changed and it allowed uh, uh, Iran to have the capability to create nuclear, if, although it was postponed for a few years and it's good. But in the meantime, uh, Um, there was uh, a, a blind eye to all the violations of Iran and disseminating terror and violations every single day. Look what's happening on the way to Hezbollah or what's happening with the Houthis in Yemen. And then this uh, regime, after they'll be released from all the sanctions, it started taking advantage in order to uh, deploy in the area. Their ideology is not to strengthen Iran from within, but they want to turn this region, even if it's Sounds imaginary, but they want to make the world Shiite. Unfortunately, in the last few years, they managed to be very influential in Iraq with the Shiites and the militias and the uh, Revolutionary Guard and Lebanon. It's for long already being abducted by the Iranian and Hezbollah. The decision of the war of Lebanon uh, against us will not be in Beirut. It will be in Tehran. Hezbollah is just a strategic arm of Iran. Yemen is controlled by the Houthi. They're a small minority. They're in control. They're just like Hezbollah. They get uh, weapons, one money. And same goes for Syria now with the attempt to come to us. So in this respect, we must uh, coordinate with the United States, with our policy, with all the complaints and discussions with the United States. The United States is our strategic ally from a political point of view, security, economically, it's our ally. It's true that we had a few discussions, but let's put some order. We heard the uh, speech of a president that speaks very clearly regarding the fact that Iran is the main threat rather than ISIS, and Iran is not part of the solution, it's part of the problem. Let's see how we implement it now together. What I would suggest, and the INSS has, has already published a paper on that, and some of the things I am saying, uh, with my all modesty, uh, some changes have already been uh, published there, even here and in Washington, is to exert pressure on this re regime already. We don't need to look for reasons. We need sanctions, even if they're bilateral, by the Americans when it comes to violations we are already seeing. Also when it comes to proliferation of weapons and missiles, and also human rights. They execute those who are against the regime. These are three reasons, even before we start opening the nuclear agreement, to start talking with the P5 plus 1 about the improvement of it and certainly a tighter supervision of it. The division is currently very, very weak. And to think of maybe the end of the era of this agreement to be prepared for exerting pressure on the Iranian regime so that in some form or another Iran will not have any military nuclear capabilities. That should be our, uh, ulterior, uh, our main motive. And these moves, uh, we need to also be coordinated in terms of intelligence with the United States and other countries in order to really bring about the Iranian regime as it had uh, come to the uh, negotiation table in 2012. This uh, was due to, um, so to sanctions, to a military threat, and the main concern of Khamenei, the leader, that there will be an internal riot that will be of concern to the regime. If we bring this regime to the dilemma of survival versus a bomb or 
Being defiant versus a bomb, when, the, when Europe is, as the United States is also of the same opinion, I think that it will choose survival as it did in 2012. And that's the way to work with Iran. And the final question that also incorporates another question, is today's Israel realizing the vision of its founders, the Zionist vision? Well, I have not given up the dream of Zionism, of Israel being the homeland of the Jewish people and being an exemplary society. We our society is based on Jewish values, on, democ on democratic values. It has to be strong, it has to be right. And as we approach our 70th anniversary, we are blessed. There is a full half of the glass. We, there is no country in the region that is stronger militarily. It is also strong economically, one of the strongest in the world. And that has to do with our creativity, our high tech, our economy of knowledge, and not being too impressed by gas, even though it's a strategic asset, to keep I investing in education so that high tech can continue to be the leading factor of our economy. And that's why our country is also safer, because it has military and economic strength. But in recent years, unfortunately, we have been derailed. We have, we're no longer on the path that was supposed to lead us to being an exemplary society. It's already our third prime minister that is being um, investigated into a purity of, uh, 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 who, who has a moral issues. Um, we are also having the problem of really having one part of society um, divided and against the other and also attacking our institutions, which is like the, the, the Supreme Court and those who uh, who cater to society, which is the police force, the army, or any other senior official. So what? The political echelon makes a decision at the end of the day. It's okay to hear everyone's opinions as long as we make the right decisions. And if they're, we're talking about uh, if they're called elites that are not allowed to rule, and they are people going in the echelon goes against them, then we are in trouble. And therefore, I believe that we should have a different kind of leadership, one that is unifying rather than dividing, a leadership that is compassionate to its citizens and provides answers to young couples, those who should be a middle class and cannot make ends meet by investing by providing solutions for what the state should provide for citizens in terms of health, welfare, and education, and to provide equal opportunity to all its citizens without discriminating between the poor and rich, and to give back the uh, formality to have leadership at the top and education.